It's finally here. The Varla Pegasus is ready to be unleashed and ready to fly. But will it be a completely smooth ride or will I encounter problems on the way? Let's talk about the pros and the cons I've experienced and find out. What's up YouTube Universe, this is Jacob Dark. If you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe button and that notification bell, especially if you're looking for more reviews on the latest tech-related gear and help me reach my current goal of 25,000 subscribers. As always, I'll drop a link in the description of this video which you can use to help support this channel. Now, let's not waste any more time and get into today's video. After reviewing the Eagle One about six months ago, Varla decided to reach out and send me their long-awaited Pegasus model aimed at city commuters like myself. The box was in pretty good condition compared to other scooters I've received, but that might be speaking more on FedEx and UPS's handling capabilities as most scooters come boxed up the same way in a large cardboard box packed with foam. First look impressions out of the box are that this thing has a very unique look and feel, almost like the BMW of scooters. Inside the box you'll receive a small printout on the locking mechanism, a utility tool, an extra kickstand, an extra D-ring and brake pads in a plastic bag, the manual, a locking chain and the charging cable. Let's get it to the garage and check out the specs and features. Starting with the handlebar on the left, we have your rear brake lever, a bell, and your power and mode selector buttons. On the right, we have your front brake lever with the thumb throttle, which I'm still getting used to as I've only used trigger throttles before. Side note, the handlebar measures about 26 inches wide, so it can be a tight fit when you travel if you tend to put your scooters in your trunk. In the middle, we have a big LCD display, which is great in sunlight and displays your battery level, speedometer, which can be changed from kilometers per hour to miles per hour, PAS or mode, and your odometer, which can also be changed by pressing the power button. Under the LCD is your hook, which connects to the D-ring on the rear of the deck to fold up the scooter and transport. In addition to the folding clamp, you have this Velcro strap which helps secure the stem. Another side note here is that when you're trying to unhook the clamp, it can be pretty difficult to pull out and sometimes does require a bit of muscle. Below the clamp, we have your front headlight, which if I'm being honest, isn't really that impressive and had to be tightened out of the box. One of the biggest features I love on this scooter is the silicone deck pad, which measures in at about 25 and a half inches long, six and a half inches wide, ensuring a comfortable ride and flexibility with standing position. Now, one thing I would have liked to see is an LED strip along the side to add to the small headlight and back brake light. The scooter does have dual 500 watt motors, which definitely helps the acceleration reach a nice top speed, dual suspension so you can tackle those rougher road terrains a little easier, as well as make for a more comfortable ride, and dual disc brakes, which help you to come to a fast stop should you need to at higher speeds. But the shining star in the wheel assembly are the 8-inch solid tires. Solid, so you won't ever have to worry about a flat and be inconvenienced with changing your tires, and they're 3.5 inches wide, which means more grip and stability. Now that we've gotten acquainted, let's take it out on our first ride.
First impressions are that while the motors are a little noisy at low speeds, and I'm still adjusting to the thumb throttle having many jerk accelerations, once you get going over 10 miles per hour, the ride is one of the smoothest I've ever been on. But there are a few bumps in the road I ran into after the ride, so let's talk about those before I share my final thoughts. I mentioned earlier the headlight was loose and needed tightening. Well, after hitting the trails, it became loose again and required another adjustment. I'm hoping this doesn't become a daily nuisance. The deck loop D-ring broke on my very first attempt at lifting it up, so after installing the backup ring included, well, that one broke as well. The biggest issue I ran into was the rear wheel assembly creaking very badly. It took me a while to pinpoint the source, tightening every bolt and using WD-40, but in the end, it was the plastic where these screws connect under the deck that caused the issue. Tightening the screws has eliminated the noise. At first, I was a little put off by the stiffness of the steering and then discovered Varla uses an internal steering damper, which purposely causes the stiffness, which might feel different at first if you're not used to it, but ultimately leads to better stability at higher speeds. After going back to a scooter with similar specs without a damper, it's night and day and now that I've been spoiled by it, there's no going back. At the end of the day, the Varla Pegasus is a solid commuter scooter for the price and is definitely the smoothest ride I've ever tried. Even with its few shortfalls, if you're looking for a comfortable mid-price scooter that really delivers when it comes to price meets performance, the Varla Pegasus should definitely be on your list. Now that's going to do it for today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments, questions, or concerns in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great day.